For case six, we have an 81-year-old man with a history of uh, stroke or CVA and with new deficits. So here we see uh, brain CT, we've got multiple areas of, kind of hypodensity, we've got big ventricles, big sylvian fissures, so we know there's been some volume loss. But then we see some area of hyperintensity there that's concerning for hemorrhage. Here we see an MR through the same level, we've got some susceptibility in that area. But again, we see kind of extensive white matter abnormalities throughout uh, the entire brain, like these are essentially confluent white matter abnormalities. Uh, so much that you would call them severe, definitely some volume loss. These ventricles are far too large, even for a patient of 81. Now we start looking at gradient imaging, and we start to see a number of abnormalities. And you see numerous of these little punctate areas of susceptibility. As you go through multiple levels, again, you're going to see many of these peripherally located areas of, of susceptibility. Here you see greater susceptibility in an area where there's probably more acute hemorrhage than we saw on the CT. As you come higher, you just see more uh, of the same. Finally, we get to the top here again, like there's multiple cortical based uh, areas of susceptibility. So, with our systemic approach, we're looking at many lesions, they're cortical and subcortical in location. This patient's a little older, so this is one of the oldest patients we've seen, and uh, no additional history. So, when you're thinking about an older patient, uh, you definitely want to be thinking about. Uh, cerebral amyloid angiopathy. Now, you might think, now, what other conditions are associated with this disease? So this is a case of cerebral amyloid angiopathy. Um, the imaging appearance we've seen already, multiple kind of peripheral areas of hemocerosis on gradient towards susceptibility imaging. There's a great deal of overlap between dementia and Alzheimer's disease, as well as Down syndrome. Uh, usually, these patients are greater than 60 years old. Now, for cerebral amyloid disease, there's really three types that you have to think about. The one that we're seeing here is the angiopathy, which is uh, essentially vasculitis associated with amyloid. You can often see patients that get mass-like uh, amyloidomas. And when I say often, I mean that you can sometimes see that. It's, it's not really that common. There's also an inflammatory component, and in that you'll see uh, amyloidosis, but you'll see a much uh, more aggressive-looking encephalitis, so a much more acute-looking process. You can get primary amyloid disease, or you can also get it secondary to other conditions, such as renal disease. And as I mentioned already, this uh, condition is associated with Alzheimer's disease.